which is the best capture card for Xbox Series X, Series S and PS5. Well, here are my favourite 4K and high frame rates capable options and why. For years, my trusty Elgato Game Capture HD worked flawlessly, recording Xbox One and original Xbox gameplay video with ease. While I will still be using it for the latter, capturing Xbox Series X, Series S and PS5 gameplay at native resolution requires an upgrade. The reason is that most capture cards can only record at full HD, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels. The new generation of consoles can output up to 4K and 120 frames per second, which means losing out on detail, smoothness and editing freedom if you avoid upgrading. So here is my guide to the best capture cards for those lovely new consoles. Affiliate links in the description, all money made will be used to make more videos. Feel free to subscribe and like if you find the video useful. Capturing gameplay at higher resolutions and faster frame rates gives you improved picture quality, the ability to crop in without things looking pixelated or as pixelated, smoother footage, slow motion, that's the short answer. All of that can benefit to your viewers, especially if they are watching on a higher resolution display, such as a flagship smartphone or a 4K television. It also means you can show games as they are intended to be viewed and played. The extra detail comes from 1080p to 1440p, being a 77% increase in pixel count, while 4K is four times that of 1080p. A total of 8,294,004 400 pixels from 3840 by 2160. As a result, things look more detailed and sharper. The Xbox Series X, Series S and PS5 can also run games at higher frame rates, which means smoother video. Imagine a flick book. The faster you turn the pages, the smoother the animation. It is the same principle. Higher is better for fast paced games like first person shooters. Therefore, if you are recording some Call of Duty quick scoping goodness, it may look jarring to viewers who are used to 60 frames per second if you are showing gameplay at half that. On the flip side, some people will not know the difference. In my humble opinion, 4K 60 frames per second is the sweet spot of detail and smoothness. The problem is that there are relatively few capture card options capable of this. To date, there is nothing that can do 4K 120 frames per second. Not that it matters much, for reasons I will explain in a second. If you are happy with 4K 30, which can be great for games that are more cinematic, then Recording at 60 frames per second means you have the option to slow down playback to 50% for a touch of slow motion. At 120 frames, you can do 50 or 25% playback speed for 60 and 30 frames per second, respectively. While it can be tempting to go for 4K 120 creamy footage, bear in mind that YouTube's maximum is 60 frames per second. You could upload and then adjust the video playback speed but that gets complicated. Also consider that many monitors, smartphones, tablets and TVs can be 30 frames per second at best. Even if 120 FPS was possible on YouTube, the number of people with a high frame rate display is small, so relatively few people would benefit. YouTube does, however, support the 4K resolution, and even if you don't want full 4K, recording at that level and downscaling to a lower resolution usually looks better than recording at 1080p or 1440p. Before I get device specific, know that there are two types of capture card, internal and external. Internal typically sits in a PCIe slot in your motherboard and has multiple HDMI and DisplayPort connections to connect to your display and console. Internal capture cards are usually cheaper as they require installation by you or the family nerd. Plus the PC hardware requirements for a 4K60 card are higher. That includes storage space as 4K files get big fast. Positives include the fact this option is discreet and can add some bling to your system in the form of RGB lighting. 
just make sure you have a spare PCIe slot and a powerful enough power supply unit. Also, you will need your PC to be near the console you want to use for gameplay capture. External capture cards, meanwhile, spend their life outside a PC case. This means you can hide it away or have it nearby to make swapping cables easier. You also do not need to worry about installation. Usually it's just plug and play, then install the gameplay capture software. Also useful is that external capture cards can be transported easily and steal away less processing power from your computer. Minimum system requirements are much less relevant too. A slow laptop can suffice. Both types of capture card also allow you to live stream, should you wish to play Xbox Series X, Series S and PS5 on Twitch or YouTube or whatever else you use. They even include overlays and other more useful functionality, but I won't go into that here. So internal versus external, which is best? If you require a portable solution and or are afraid to install a PC component yourself or don't have a family nerd, the decision will be easy as only external ticks those boxes. Please note, if recording PC gameplay, you can use OBS or equivalent free gameplay capture software. There is no need for a capture card. However, recording while playing can adversely affect your frame rate, so many professionals use a dual device setup. Pricey, but effective. Also bear in mind that some game capture cards have what is called a pass-through. This allows you to play games at 4K or 1440p while recording or streaming, but not record at that resolution. If a device seems cheap, this is probably why. HDR support, meanwhile, is beneficial as without it you will have to switch HDR off and lose some image quality improvements. YouTube supports HDR video uploads. It is short for high dynamic range and is a video format that provides improved brightness, contrast and colour accuracy. The downside of HDR is that it can be a pain to get the footage to play nice in some editing software such as Premiere Pro, although things are improving. Anyway, that's the technical stuff. Now it's time for what I think are the four best game capture cards for PS5, Xbox Series X and Series S. Prices may vary. Up first is the Elgato Game Capture 4K60 Pro Mark II. Bit of a mouthful. This is an internal solution that can manage 4K at 60 frames per second or up to 240 frames per second at 1080p, twice what an Xbox Series X, Series S and PS5 can output. Not only that, Elgato's 4K60 Pro Mark II can record 1440p at 144 frames per second, allowing 120 FPS capture of your new console with HDR10 enabled. The 4K60 Mark II capture card is a noticeably smaller device than the Mark I. The Mark I is less useful as it cannot capture HDR and does not have a pass-through connection that lets you play at high frame rates while recording lower quality gameplay footage. The Ava Media Live Gamer 4K is the game capture card I use and it is better than the 4K60 Pro Mark II in some ways. Larger too, not that it matters much once in a PCIe x4, x8 or x16 slot. It features RGB lighting with various tasteful presets. Or you can switch it off and embrace darkness. Said lighting can help you rectify installation issues. For example, the flashing red meant I had yet to install the necessary Ava Media drivers and software. Just ignore what the book says it means. The Live Gamer 4K is not especially new, but it can manage 4K 60 frames per second at up to 240 megabyte detail if your PC and storage device can handle that speed. HDR capture? Not a problem either. As for high frame rates, the Live Gamer 4K tops out at 120 frames per second at 1440p and 240 frames per second at 1080p detail, which is impressive. 
It can also capture in a variety of format types, including H.265, and you have numerous customization options to play with. Meanwhile, the Ava Media Record Central software is easy to use, reasonably functional, and I like the fact it displays what is on screen without lag, unlike my Elgato Game Capture HD. This is my pick of the bunch, which makes sense as I said I bought one, but we're not done yet. Imagine the Ava Media Live game of 4K I just talked about. Now imagine it's living outside your PC. That's the Live Gamer Bolt. External capture card convenience goodness. You do, however, pay a premium for the fact it just plugs into a PC or laptop and does its thing. The unit itself is relatively small and more square than its sibling, but still features some RGB goodness on the front that you can turn off. You will need a Thunderbolt 3 port to use it though, so check what your computer has. A Thunderbolt 3 internal card can be purchased, however this will add to the overall cost of capturing 4K60, 120, 240 gameplay, and will need installation, so you're back at square one if lacking the tech knowledge or confidence. I think the live game of 4K makes more sense, given it is usually substantially cheaper, but then the convenience of easy transportation and freeing up valuable PC resources, maybe you have a slow PC or laptop, could sway your decision. Lastly, we have Elgato's 4K 60S Plus Capture Card. Like the Live Gamer Bolt, it lives outside your laptop or PC, so it's more convenient, at the expense of taking up desk space. However, unlike Ava Media's equivalent, it tops out at 60 frames per second. Usefully, you can add in an SD card and record footage directly to that, which the Bolt cannot do. And the maximum bitrate is 200 megabytes per second, 60 more than the internal 4K60 Pro Mark II. It also records HDR and uses a USB port, faster the better obviously, so you won't need a Thunderbolt 3 port. If you are happy losing the potential of high frame rates and the highest data recording detail, or like the sound of recording to an SD instead of your hard drive, the 4K 60S Plus is your best bet. And that is it for this rather techy video, but hopefully you found it useful. For standard 1080p or 1440p gameplay, you can save yourself money. However, your viewers will not see all that extra Xbox Series X, Series S, and PS5 graphical goodness. Thank you very much for watching, hit subscribe and like, I shall see you in the next video, take care, bye.